Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to another edition of Cancer with Dr. Denise Ejo, CEO of Comwood Cancer Foundation in partnership with Plus TV Africa. I want to welcome you all to another exciting conversation on appreciating how radiotherapy influences cancer treatment outcomes. Um, I hope we're going to have a lovely um, conversation and great to see you all again this week. So let's start the day and let's start our month. First and foremost, um, this month is Cancer Survivors Month. So for us to be able to make sure you get the message, I'm going to say follow us on all our social media platforms as we share various activities from various organizations. So it's not just about us across Nigeria. Just check our Common Cancer Foundation and we'll tell you what's going on. Um, so good afternoon, everyone. And today we're going to be having a lovely, lovely conversation with two very special guests of mine. Um, Mrs. Anima Shaun. Hello, miss. Hello, ma'am. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. We can hear you and I can see you nice and clear. You're looking very bright. And um, <laughs> Mrs. Joy. Day. But I'm going to call her Joy throughout the pro um, program. Hello, Joy. Hello, Ma. Thank you for having me, Ma. Thank you for agreeing to do this because, you know, most cancer patients do not want to talk about cancer. If everybody's like, it's a, ooh. So let's go. 4th of June is the National Cancer Survivors Day in 2023. And it's an international event to raise awareness of cancer sufferers and survivors. The event is held on the 4th sun, um, Sunday, the 4th of June, 2023 this year. But normally it's always the first Sunday in every year in June. So I want to welcome you to a nice conversation we're going to be having. And uh, let me give you some facts about it. According to the National Cancer Institute, an individual is considered a cancer survivor from the time of diagnosis, the balance of his life or hers, of her life. Every survivorship experience is unique as they may face challenges during and after treatment. With survivorship, research, Adverse effects will con will, will be controlled, treated, and prevented. So today we're going to be having a very, very interesting conversation with two very, very important people to me. One of them is a survivor like myself. And so you see what? I like to celebrate us. And then I've got a very special lady in this house who has now told me I've, my nickname I gave her is now trending. So that's very nice. And Timuji, good afternoon. Oh. <laughs> so who are my guests? Let me let me introduce them to you. So um, first one is Mrs. Moji Anima Shaun, who is a radiation therapist and hospital administrator with, with over 40 years of experience working in this cancer space. This includes treating patients, teaching HRT students, and mentoring. He is the past vice chairman of the radiation of radiographers in Nigeria, of Nigeria, and a trustee of Association Radiation Therapists of Nigeria. Muji is also a board member of the Radiation Registration Board of Nigeria. Wow, thank you, Auntie Muji, for joining us this afternoon. And I've also got my healer like myself, a cancer survivor, who is Mrs. Joy Ibude, who had cancer of the salivary glands. That's a very rare cancer, I think, but I'll find out as we go along. Joy started her journey in 2008 when she discovered a painful tumor under the left side of her chin. After two consecutive years of surgery, she was diagnosed with cancer of the left salivary glands. She went through 30 days of chemotherapy and six cycles of chemotherapy. 30 days of radiotherapy and six cycles of chemotherapy. And we thank God today she's also got a second chance. As I would always say, we always have chances for every day we have. Yeah. So, so we got questions going now, aren't we? So how are we going to start these questions? Let's look at the topic very carefully. Appreciating how radi radiotherapy influences cancer treatment outcomes. So firstly, let me first take this opportunity to thank Plus TV Africa, who partner with us and who are going to be partnering with us throughout the month to celebrate cancer survivors across the um, across Nigeria. Friends, families, and the support, love, the times you laugh with us, the times you cry with us. And to those who have lost already on the journey, may, the, may everyone's soul rest in peace. Mm. Question one. Nice to meet you both. Joy, can you share us quickly your cancer journey? Yes, my journey started 2008, but I thank God after two 
uh, year, several years of consecutive surgeries. I was diagnosed of cancer of the salivary glands. And uh, immediately that result came, I was asked to go for radiotherapy because the, the tumor is the type that grows very fast. They called it grade A adenoid carcinoma. So the doctor ordered us to quickly go for radiation to shrink the tumor and to kill the cancer cell. So we should rally around to make money. You know, cut a treatment of cancer is very expensive, but I thank God for itself at that particular time. So we were able to raise the money. It was not easy, almost 200,000 as at that time. That was uh, 2000, early 2011. So I started the radiotherapy. The, the radiotherapy is always given to us every blessed day. It's a kind of machine treatment with a kind of uh, rails that direct, directed to that particular site. So I went through it for 30 good days. And each day is just for a few minutes. And at that time, machines in, in Nigeria, I would, let me put it that way, they're down, radiotherapy machines. So the only one that was working was at a co-hospital, Ikeja. So I have to leave my house very early in the morning, as early as 3 a.m. in order to beat the crowd. So I went through that journey for 30 days. It wasn't easy, but I thank God that I was able to skate through it. And there's a side effect that come with it. But I thank God that at least I'm here to share my story today. So I don't know if I should go home now. <laughs> I want to thank you because I've never really heard of uh, I, I don't know that word, so please just understand. I might be a doctor, I'm an educationist, and I don't know medical terms, and somehow I have decided to have a, a brain blank on medical words. But I did hear you said something, uh, carcinoma. Don't worry, we've got a doctor, we've got a specialist in the house. So we've yeah. got Asimoji, who is Mrs. Anima Shang, and she's a specialist in this one. So maybe she will help us to educate the public on what you are trying to say, and it will continue. So... um. Antimoji, because that's what yeah. I'm going to call you for the entire program. As you have said, I nicknamed you that name, and so I'm going to proudly be the one that tells everybody, Antimoji, go and speak to her. All right, let's go. Thank what you. is a radiation therapist, and why is a, radiothera a radiotherapist important in treating cancer? Um, a radiation therapist is um, the technician who treats the patient. You have a, an oncologist who is the medical doctor who specialized in treatment of cancers. And that's the specialist who looks after the patient, is in, in charge of the patient management. But the radiation therapist is actually the person who does the treatment after it has been planned, the radiotherapy after it has been planned. Um, a radiation therapist, you, it's um, in Nigeria, for instance, it's a bachelor's program. You have to do a lot of physics, a lot of uh, math, a lot of uh, anatomy, pathology, physiology. Um, I'm saying this because a lot of people don't realize that. They just think that we come out of the room, we set you up, come out of the room and press the button. But uh, for us to be able to press that button because it is millions of votes being mm -hmm. um, put in the patient, you have yeah. to know what, exactly what you're doing. So it's a highly specialized um, um, area and profession in, in, in the um, cancer, in the cancer space. So that's what the radiation therapist does. So the doctor prescribes, the medical physicist or the symmetrist do the treatment planning, how the patient is going to be treated, and the radiation therapy, therapist treats the patient. So that's, that's the um, team in a radiotherapy department. I think um, yeah. that's, that should be, is, is clear enough. I think that is. Um, it's very interesting because, uh, like you're talking about the radiotherapist, a lot of people have different experiences. Because if you, if I think about um, Joy, who's sitting next on this screen, on this program with us, if you look at Joy now and think about the process of her treatment as a salivary gland, then I think of my treatment using the gamma knife. Yeah. Can you can you explain both of them? So I think the first one you've explained will be the generic. No. Can you explain both of them? Let me show you. <laughs> OK. The, the radiation therapy, like um, Joy had said earlier, is focused exactly on the area that you want to treat. 
unlike like the non like the chemo which treats all the the whole parts of the body anywhere there's blood the chemo will get to but with radiation therapy it's specific high dose radiation ionizing radiation to the to the area and the importance of radiation therapy is because it's meant to quickly kill the cells so they don't mm. have a chance of survival number 1 and then they don't have a chance to go to other parts of the body which is what will happen if it's not treated so again joy had mentioned that they said that it's a fast growing tumor some tumors are slow like prostate some are fast like the um, um, salivary gland like she talked the uh, um, she talked about so the important thing is to quickly treat them for joy for instance she probably would have had to have a mask something to hold her head down to keep it steady in in while she's having the treatment it will be specific to the area and because of the area that they're treating you have to treat the cancer cells but mm. then you don't want to damage the normal cells because to get to the cancer cells you have to have some effect on the normal cells which is why there are side effects uh and uh, thank you uh, ladies for your contribution for the guidance and the information you're giving with us and we look forward to continuing in a few minutes once after this break thank you stay tuned Welcome back everyone as I'm continuing this conversation with Mrs. Anima Shaun and Joy Ibude I think we're having a fantastic conversation and I hope you are you're able to pick out questions and thoughts about the experiences of cancer patients as they go through radiotherapy um even though I've had it I didn't really realize this is what how it was and um listening to Joy she had a very different experience so it's just that you know our experiences are always going to be di- different but the bottom line is we should strive to be able to get through it so i'm going to go to the next question now ms anima shall based on the two the conversations that joy and i or the experiences joy and i i have explained would you say that um what would you say are the key takeaway points that you want our viewers to make sure they they understand because a lot of people do not take cancer pay treatment because they are afraid of like what joy has explained or what i've explained but the truth is that both of us are still sitting here joy is sitting here since um, 2011 is that when you said joy right yeah uh, that's when i had my radio yeah and uh, mine is 2000 um 16 so really we're still here and that should be able to get through to people why they shouldn't run away from it yes and i i i i totally agree with you your last point that you are still here um as human beings we we should be able to put in our best whether we're here or not is not really up to us our responsibility is to look after our body and if one gets cancer radiotherapy is one of the basic treatments most of the time unless it's a, a it's a radio resistant uh, tumor that doesn't respond to radiotherapy but radiotherapy surgery and chemotherapy are the three and, and and none of them is without pain none of them is without discomfort but at the end of the day the result is what we're seeing with uh, both of you being here so the important thing is to work with the patients i i feel that a lot of counseling needs to go into treatment um and i'm glad that joy said that she was lots of things were explained to her before she actually started the treatment so when she got she got to that point she could understand the reason why um she had the pain in her throat why she had the swallowing and that it would you would cross that bridge and come out to the other end with nothing if you look at joy's neck now you would never know that she is she has gone through radiotherapy i mean you look at i mean you probably had your hair cut um and then dr denise but nobody would know that now it's only a period of time it's even something as simple as malaria when you have malaria you feel uncomfortable but when you start taking the pills i you actually feel worse at some point first before you start feeling better is only the that period for cancer um, treatment for the radiotherapy lasts uh, um, longer than it would for malaria but any 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 drugs 
has some kind of effect on people. So there would be a, a, a time when things look as if you feel worse and then you start feeling better. So people have to understand that it is important when they say go for radiotherapy. Um, Joy is stand sitting here today because they said you have to go for radiotherapy quickly because the cancer grows very quickly. And she listened. If you, if you, um, sometimes the, the taboo, and that's the sad part for me, the taboo for patients, maybe somebody who couldn't afford the treatment, but they can't, they don't want to go out and tell people, oh, please help me because I need um, to have treatment. I need to have radiotherapy. They feel that it's something they did wrong that causes cancer. It's not. So no. you have to be quick about getting your treatment. It's absolutely important. The diagnosis needs to be quick. The treatments needs to be fast because every day those cells are growing. Mm -hmm. They grow in the organ and then when the organ um, doesn't contain them, they start going to the lymph nodes, to the blood cells, to different organs. So it's very important that you have that radiotherapy to arrest it if that's the first thing that they ask you to do or if it's chemotherapy, whatever treatment, mode of treatment. But today we're talking about radiotherapy in particular, but you have to, it, it arrests the cancer. It stops the cells from growing and you want to do that as quickly as possible. So it's, um, it's very important for people to um, remember that the doctor who's asking you to do this, they know what they, 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 they are talking about, especially if you go to an oncologist. And that's also another important thing that you have to, when you, Come, don't, I mean, you can pray, pray as hard as you can, Muslim, Christian, traditional way, pray, use the doctor, but also make sure that you go to a specialist. Don't mm -hmm. treat cancer through a general practitioner. Don't treat cancer through somebody who is not an oncologist. It doesn't give you the best fighting chance because mm -hmm. they are the ones who are trained to be um, uh, the in charge of oncology patients, just as well as don't treat, don't um, get treated in radiation, in radiotherapy without a radiation therapist. We have to educate ourselves so we can ask the right questions. And people in other parts of the world that is not Nigeria, um, they ask, they will ask you, are you a licensed, you, 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 they don't even have to ask because your license is meant to be there. Are you a licensed radiation therapist? Are you a practicing, you know, do you have a current license? Are you an oncologist? They will ask these questions. It's your right to ask these questions so that at the end of the day, you give yourself a fighting chance. And then um, once we do that, that is really our own responsibility to give ourselves a fighting chance when one has a cancer diagnosis. So radiotherapy is an important part of it. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, um, uh, Mrs. Annie Marshall, because... I think that's one of I think that's one thing that is very that's a very key message that people need to understand if we're going to make a difference going forward. Mm -hmm. And one thing I was going to talk about, which I think Joy has nicely covered, was most people think is very painful. Um, yes, it is very painful. We're not going to lie about it, Joy. I think we're going to agree on this, but it's not painful. It's okay for me. It's, it was painful. At the time of doing it, so for that six-hour period, but within by the end of forty-eight hours, I was back on my walking around as if nothing had happened. And like Joyce said, she went for ten days, and uh, before she realized that it, <laughs> there was something going on, and managed for the rest of the treatment only to go back and start to heal. So we do heal from radio radiotherapy, which is what I'm trying to get to the general public now i'm going to ask everybody all of us are going to answer this question because as i round up this is the key takeaways what would you say joy to the government if you were sitting in front of our new president today and he asked you what do you want him to do for you as a cancer patient what would you say to him oh uh, what i would say to our president if i'm given the chance to speak to him is to kind of set a scheme to assist uh, our patients, cancer patients out there. Those that have been diagnosed of it, majority of them don't have the money to cope with the treatment. The treatment is expensive. The food aspect area is also expensive because we kind of change our lifestyle. 
as a cancer patient. We can't eat everything anymore. So we are kind of selective. Make, majorly eating balanced diet every day and it's not easy. So if there's a way the government can assist both the ones going through the treatment and those that have gone over the treatment at the time, they assist them financially to meet up with any uh, liabilities they are facing, then I really appreciate that. Thank you very much. So you see, yours is very straight and easy, you see. Um, so one of the key things that has been found globally is that cancer cancer is a very expensive treatment and it affects every single person across the world. So anywhere in the world that anybody has cancer, cancer funding is actually a cause for concern and it's something that is being raised globally for all of us because I think all of us are going through it. Now, I would say for my own, it would be mental health and our psycho social needs. Why would I come from that point? Because a lot of people do not realize that as a cancer patient, we go through mental health challenges only because we don't know what tomorrow what tomorrow holds. And a lot of us may either have family or people that are dependent on us and we can't even fund ourselves, fund our treatment to even start to think. And that is why a lot of people fall off the bus because of the funding. Um, Mrs. Ali Marshall, can you give us your singular thing that you want? I mean, if you were speaking to His Excellency today, can you give him a message for us? Yes. If I was speaking with Mr. President today, what I would say to him is that um, he should, the NGOs should be empowered. Um, the um, mental counseling that you talked about, the um, the the financial support. These are all things that can be taken, taken up by the NGOs and get it to the people, to the point of contact in terms of maintenance, in terms of addressing it to the right place at the right time. I think NGOs should be, especially especially in cancer care, because of the, the cost and all the things involved in it, NGOs should be empowered to the degree that they are more like a support system for the for the for the for the government in in, in building all these fancy hospitals. Um, NGOs should be empowered to ensure that the people who need the treatment are able to get the treatment. That's what I would I, say to him. I want to say a very very big thank you to you ladies for joining me this afternoon the, today and working through or rather discussing this the um, radiotherapy aspect of the cancer journey because a lot of the time um w words that are said are based on not knowledge but what people say they think we're going through or how they think um we should be um living this experience so i want to thank you both very much for joining me this afternoon um, this afternoon this morning wherever you are Thank you, thank you, thank you. I really appreciate you. And to all our viewers, thank you for joining me and listening and participating. And we're hoping that you will help us spread the message. Whatever sickness it is, uh, Mrs. Amina Shawn said, she said very clearly, she said, seek the right person to speak yeah. to. Seek the right person. There is your doctor, there is your oncologist, there is your radi radiologist. There are all of them are there. There is the psycho people. There is the, <laughs> that's why I call them. Please don't be upset. They're medical people, <laughs> but all you, uh, medical medical words are very very big big grammar. So I want to thank you all for joining me this afternoon, this today. Together we fight. Together we win. You can follow Common Cancer Foundation on our social media handles. Um, Subscribe, share, and this uh, videos will be on our Common Cancer Foundation YouTube channel for you to watch. Um, Mrs. Anima Shaun, um is also an NGO owner, and I would like you to say the name of your NGO, please. St. Cyril Cancer Treatment Foundation. Thank you very much. So if you are around that area, you need help, you need advice, you want to donate or you want to support that charity, please look, reach out for them. Reach out to them and meet and, and, and see what you can do. I want to thank you all for watching us. I want to thank Plus TV especially for giving us this space and for your continued support in creating cancer awareness and our cancer awareness program. We believe together we fight, together we win. We'll see you soon and um, have a lovely Cancer Survivors Month. All survivors, let's all enjoy. At least we're getting through this month. And let's celebrate each other. Ladies, thank you for joining me. And thank you all. Have a thank lovely day.